Welcome to Unlikely Intersections, the podcast where intent, impact, and inquiry inspire our conversations. I'm Dr. Philip Brown with my good friend, Dr. Terry Jackson. We got a special guest, Sabrina Hickman, today. And, you know, the interesting thing about intersections is that we all go through many intersections daily. The way we navigate these determines the trajectory of our days and our lives. Terry, we got another uh, local hero. Another local hero. Um, bigger than the local hero we had a couple of weeks ago, being Brandon <laughs> Big B Hickman, who is her husband, but um, both of them I adore. Uh, They're both highly intelligent people, and they are doing some extremely positive things in the city of Wilmington. Absolutely. We are lucky to have folks like the Hickmans. Yes. Sabrina, tell us a little bit about what you got going on these days. Well, thank you all for having me, uh, first of all. And I would love to tell my husband, uh, <laughs> I'm bigger, right? <laughs> this is big E. <laughs> Note that, okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So what do I have going on? Uh, so many things. I guess I would give you a quick background for uh, your viewers who may not be familiar with me. I'm a Gullah Geechee woman. Mm-hmm. You don't hear that accent right now, mm-hmm. but when two mm-hmm. or three touch and agree, mm-hmm. it comes mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. Eat some rice is even thicker. <laughs> um, I've, um, I'm from Charleston, born mm-hmm. and raised, uh, downtown Charleston. So I'm an inner city kid. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really like to say single mom, but, uh, came from single parent household. Um, yeah, my mom kept me involved in everything. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. there was not a lot of downtime and I guess that's kind of where I get it from. We, mm-hmm. <laughs> there's no such as boredom. Mm-hmm. There's always something to do. And I think that was the, um, survival You know, Mm -hmm. for the inner city, you just keep the kids busy, keep Mm -hmm. them involved. Um, And if she wasn't working and she was doing um, church activities, Mm -hmm. she was putting on events, which I didn't put all that together until only a few years ago. (laughs) I realized, where'd you get it from, my mom? (laughs) Uh, But she was always doing fundraisers or um, putting programs on the church. Mm -hmm. And um, she had civic organization she's affiliated with as well. So... She's always held leadership positions, um, and she worked at the college. So I always say my mom was, uh, uh, she was a custodian, you Mm -hmm. know, everybody. So our house Mm -hmm. had to be Mm -hmm. clean. We Mm -hmm. scrubbed walls. I grew Mm -hmm. up cleaning Mm -hmm. the baseboards, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know, uh, Mm -hmm. and and cutting grass and whatnot. But um, she was a custodian, but she, she didn't have a lot of, fun she didn't have a lot of money but she was very resourceful mm-hmm. so she mm-hmm. would always it I didn't feel neglect mm-hmm. I would just say that mm-hmm. I didn't um I we didn't grow up having to um feel impoverished or anything my mom still lives in the same house I was born in mm-hmm. um and that's a lot to say and she's in downtown Charleston so it's prime property um I left from there went to uh Virginia uh, so when I graduated from high school, I left and went to Virginia Norfolk State University, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the Norfolk State University. Mm-hmm. Um, I was in band. I went there in band scholarship. I played saxophone, mm. alto sax. Didn't know that, did you? I did. <laughs> <laughs> woodwinds. I played a little bit of um, all the woodwinds, but um, alto was what I stuck with. Um, so hence my love for jazz or, mm-hmm. you know, um, classical music on the side. I, that's what I play when I need to really mm-hmm. study or focus in. Um, that's what I do. So, um, I was in high school band, college band, um, ROTC. I didn't enlist (laughs) 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 right before that time to jump. And I said, I don't think I'm going to do it. You know, I let somebody talk me out of that and I'm gonna get back to that, uh, part. But I, um, went to school, became a nurse. Uh, so I went for nursing. Um, it wasn't a straight through nursing uh, journey because I went in and I was almost clueless, you know, my first uh, year. So I did not do well um, on some of my testing, made a C minus. You cannot make any C's Mm -hmm. in anything. And I had A's and B's and had this one class, which was fundamentals, literally uh, nursing fundamentals. And I made a a C minus and I'm like, so what does this mean? You, you, I can't go to the next level. <laughs> it's like, you cannot go to the next level. You need to come back and take this class again next year. And that means it was not going to be offered again until that, mm. like two more semesters later. 
and then it was called you audit. So you come and you take the class, but you don't get credit for mm-hmm. it. You pay for it. And you you take the class and you then come back a following year. So I'm like, that's adding on two more years. Nope, I don't have time like that. My mom's crazy. She's going to kill me. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I have to be a nurse. I have to go back home uh, as a nurse. And uh, anyways, I had a um, wonderful counselor. Uh, then and uh, my advisor, nursing advisor, and she um, kind of guided me and told me other options that I had. Whereas before, I had other professors who were telling me to go ahead and change my major. And these mm-hmm. were nursing professors mm-hmm. saying, go change your major or you can go to social work or you can go do this and you can do that, you know. And uh, I didn't because I knew I wanted to be a nurse. And um, she said, well, here's another program, you know, that you can go into. It was an LPN program, and you go here, and uh, instead of you auditing, you know, for a year, you can actually become a licensed nurse mm-hmm. within a year, and then come back to our program, come back here, and we had a LPN BSN bridge program, and it's like, oh, perfect. So mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what I did. So I worked at, and it was an alternative. Um, that changed my life because I could have dropped out of school. Mm-hmm. Um, I could have just. Um, went and changed my major like so many other people I went to college with who were nursing majors and they did not finish. Um, they changed their majors. I feel like it's bullying because uh, mm-hmm. that's what it is. Um, and I'll get back to that as well. All of it's together. But um, being forced to change your major because of one mistake or or one failure, uh, that doesn't mean that you're a failure. You know, we, we fail every day. And I like to say I'm a master at failing. And that's mm-hmm. how we learn. That's how we mm-hmm. uh, get to be successful. And um, had I not done that, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. And so it's like, it's beautiful to watch the story, you know, that God has for each of us. Mm-hmm. You know, and we um, intersect with many different people in life. And you don't know what the purpose of that union is mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. whether it's good or bad it could be the worst person you ever met but it's <laughs> for a reason mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and so i've learned over the years that don't walk away and stay bitter you know get better That's right. so That's right. um so i've learned to heal from those hurts and from people putting the self-doubt and because that was a big thing that had to overcome um feeling invaluable or like like i don't have much value at all um and feeling unwanted um unappreciated so i went through a lot of things like that and that stems back to take back to high school because i had this science teacher and granted i got a degree in science um i had the science teacher for three years of my four years in high school um i'm like y'all couldn't find another science teacher <laughs> but for some reason we had them for everything you know your uh, biology chemistry physics you know just couldn't get rid of them and um he was cool cool i did there's just no other way of saying it and uh, why i'm saying that because he would have these tantrums or he would throw the table over or the the um mm. kick over the chair you know yell cuss you know <laughs> flunk us <laughs> i don't know if y'all say flunk up here but you know oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Like, it might be my accent coming out you know but um yeah and so uh 40s i'm talking like 20s and he'll laugh he said look you big dummy you know and he'll wow. call you know a lot of uh, the kids that so i kind of grew up in that environment like that so mm. i i never got bullied in school like high mm. school stuff you know things kids deal with now i never had that uh that problem um but people like that like the older people you know um bad teachers you know or mm. even in my family mm. uh, older siblings i've had those issues of bullying but um i never had to deal with that with the kids thank god mm. um and i guess probably because i was always preoccupied and you know i was into you know key club and rltc yeah, band yeah, band yeah, was my yeah, life yeah. so um but this guy uh he would always call us stupid and one day i'll never forget he told me i was too dumb to be a nurse because he wanted to go around and he's asking everybody in the class like what do you want to do um what do you want to do when you grow up so when you go to college where are you going? Well, I didn't know where I was going to college then. I said, well, I want to be a nurse. He said, oh, 
Ravenel, you yeah, Ravenel's my maiden name. <laughs> mm. Ravenel, you're too dumb to be a nurse. I'm like, you just wow. <laughs> sit this in wow. front of the wow. whole class. And, wow. But it was the normal toxic behavior because he would call all people dummy. Not everybody. He had his favorite picks. And um, just always hearing that, you know, you know, as a kid, uh, and even my mom tried to intervene. You know, she didn't know all of the details, but she did try to come in. He wouldn't meet. This toxic behavior was allowed to exist because it was supported by the other staff you know mm. it was almost like it's easier to keep this teacher there um, instead of getting rid of him maybe they couldn't find somebody else not realizing how detrimental that could be mm. and I'm gonna tell you that mindset the bruising that I had I didn't realize I carried that for so many years so even when I became a nurse it was like me feeling like oh I'm there's still part of me dumb so when I when I tell you my spare time this is long after I'm a nurse. I go to Barnes and Nobles and I'm just going through the books. Mm. And I'm just reading mm. and reading. I'm just always like doing, oh, I need another certification. Mm. Oh, I need another degree. <laughs> you mm. know, and I'm like, ah. so I'm no longer in that space. So I don't feel like I have to mm. compete with anything or anybody to prove anything to mm. anybody. Um, but whenever I get somebody who do challenge my smartness i'm like do you know who you're talking to <laughs> do you know who you're dealing with mm. and i don't say it to them and mm. i'll notice that but i'm like okay so i'll just show you mm -hmm. and that's how i move now so i, I do still take the beatings because i think we all do you know it could be public or it could be mm. private but um that's what actually helps me to keep moving forward and i'll tell you the good thing is he was able this teacher he was able to see me in my uniform and my badge one day Mm. And I really wish that I had the mouth that I have now. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but I did. And I just stood there. And he said, well, I knew you would. I knew you would make it. I knew you would make it. I'm sitting here like, I couldn't say anything. I just looked mm. at him, you know, but I had all these thoughts in my head, mm -hmm. you know, because I was still a little younger. But, you know, he got a chance to see that I was a nurse. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. clearly, you know, I passed NCLEX, dude. <laughs> what NCLEX mm -hmm. did you pass? None. Mm -hmm. You know, and mm -hmm. so um, that is why I always inspire. I always empower others because I know what it's like to mm -hmm. uh, go through things mm -hmm. like that. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a creative nurse. I'm not really your traditional nurse. I've done that mm -hmm. um, bedside. So um, I use my stethoscope differently as I like to say. And um, it's beautiful because I'm still helping heal and inspire, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. caring for people, nurturing. Um, I have a school now. I'm a vocational school owner. A mm -hmm. uh, dumb person cannot do that because they do not hand mm -hmm. those jokers out at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, like I said, I should send my resume to him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just my little joke there mm -hmm. on the side. But healing is a big, big thing mm -hmm. um, for me. It's amazing. We just heard, you know, we heard all about mm -hmm. the things Terry and I talk about all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, mental chatter mm -hmm. alternate realities mm -hmm. that right. we create and creating basically us being the creators of our own mm -hmm. world to a almost total extent but to a large extent mm -hmm. and there's so many examples in what you were just talking about of exactly that you know whether it was the perseverance to find an alternate path in college to get where you were trying to get in the first place mm -hmm. or whether it was this teacher that you know had this effect or how you mm. sort of circumnavigated all of that. Mm. But on this theme of navigation, I think that's such an important topic that you touched on. I wanted to uh, explore it with you a little bit mm -hmm. because it was so, so key that you found somebody that helped you with an alternate pathway. Mentoring, mm. yes. And mm -hmm. so many times, you know, what we see in many different walks of life is you know, that, that door closes to the path you were going to take, mm -hmm. but really there's a, there are many alternate paths and it's a matter of finding the right people. And now it's clear that for a lot of folks in Wilmington who want to go to school, you're one of those alternate pathway finders, right? Absolutely. You help people navigate different ways to, you know, get to a certain place. And then from that place, they have many other options. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. right. talk a little bit about how, your school works with other entities in town and, and how that can work for a prospective student. Yeah, so I have a, um, a new school here. It's a vocational school. 
Um, and I'll just tell you briefly about the vocation um, part of it because there are so many people who are really not going to college mm -hmm. um, or maybe they're not college focused, but um, you know, vocational training actually provides a quick way of getting into whatever training, getting into the workforce. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, I started with what I know, mm -hmm. which is nursing. And we've always had a nursing shortage since mm. I've been in school. <laughs> so mm. I was in college in what mid nineties. Um, there was a nursing shortage then. It's still it's twenty twenty three and it's still the same. Actually it's worse mm. now. And um that's why I keep putting that reality in people's heads, like, what are you gonna do when there are no more nurses? When the nurses all walk away, can you imagine going to the doctor or going to the hospital and there are no nurses? Because you're about there because people are leaving the bedside and we need nurses at the bedside. So my vocational school, um, I started with a nurse aid training program, which is a mm -hmm. basic entry for that pipeline in nursing there. So you want to get into the field, whether you want to be a nurse or not. It's a great way to put your feet in um, to get started. We need a lot of nursing assistants. Um, um, they were created or that position was created to help nurses because we can't do everything mm -hmm. on our own. And um, the program that I have is or was created based off of all of the holes, should I say, that I have witnessed mm -hmm. over the years, um, things that I've seen neglectful in the field. And you look at the root of it, you wanna know, well, what is the root? of it well is they're coming from somewhere mm -hmm. how do you have uh, either poorly trained or maybe they're having self-esteem issues they're not mm -hmm. so confident um they're you know having toxic behaviors that they have not grown past or mm -hmm. whatever um i look at all of those things and say well where is it coming from well home mm -hmm. lifestyle and training so well i can't fix your home lifestyle but i can actually coach you through some things, you mm -hmm. know, and um, the training, well, I can create a, a quality training center mm -hmm. um, or a space for, for you to be able to train. And so that's what I did. Um, those issues that we are dealing with in the work, workplace, personal development issues, you know, um, I, I called a, actually, a, this is, and this is just me working. This is a real story. I called a local nursing facility uh, recently calling to speak with an administrator and you have like your blockers, mm -hmm. you know, who are there. And they're like, oh, well, they ain't here, you know, right now you leave a message, you know, what, what is this pertaining to? And I say, you know, it's a nursing school and I'm trying to get clinical. Oh, oh, we're not letting no students in here right now, you know, students coming in. Um, but uh, so thank you. <laughs> it's just, mm. I was like, hello, mm. you know, cause I didn't know if they hung up the phone or mm -hmm. I'm like, is this looking at this business like you do they even know that you're answering their phone like this or talking to you know um talking to me like this and uh this went on for i believe probably about three minutes it felt like 10 minutes um and finally i said again i am saprina hickman the administrator of sankofa training wellness institute and i'm calling to speak to your administrator and i think once i said that then it was like oh you know like the shift literally was like day and night then all of a sudden she said, okay, let me see. I'm going to write down your number and okay, ma'am. And it was just now we got some mm -hmm. respect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why didn't we have that respect from the beginning? Why do I have to like really announce and put my foot down and say, hey, this is what I'm looking for. And this is what we're dealing with. Like people just answer, you know, they're working for you and they answer your phones however they want to. Mm -hmm. You know, because there's like no accountability or everybody's on eggshells. You know, we don't know how to really talk to um, people without being sued or, you know, or being ousted, mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, canceled. Um, we're just fragile. Mm -hmm. And so anyways, those personal development um, um, things are actually being addressed. Uh, we talk about those actually on day one in our class. Um uh, the, the actual training part, mentoring comes with our program, coaching, um, writing skills, you know, uh, a lot of the younger 
people and I'm, I guess I'm not even going to say younger now because I've had some adults doing it, you know, how you text is how, you know, mm -hmm. like short texting, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you're putting that in emails mm -hmm. and writing or even initially contacting the school, like there's a toll free number, what makes you think that you can text that <laughs> toll free number <laughs> but text messages are coming through and say hey how much your program mm -hmm. literally like that how mm -hmm. much your program mm -hmm. hey how much your program there no i'm mm -hmm. like where are you you don't have a comma baby you don't have mm -hmm. <laughs> why do you send an mm -hmm. email it's like almost like we don't know how to form those things anymore mm -hmm. um so our our educational systems are failing um mm -hmm. us and i think it's mm -hmm. mainly which i like to say the root of all of this is burnout People are tired. It's self. It's a self care issue, mm -hmm. and so when we get to a point where we can no longer take care of ourselves, um, then we can't take care of our businesses or anybody else's business. You know, um, in all that you said, mm -hmm. I'll go back to one word, and that's fundamentals. Yeah. Uh, you t you spoke to the fundamentals of communication, of not being able to. Uh, properly construct a text message or an, e or, or an email, right? Mm -hmm. So we know from a writing perspective, if you yeah. can't do that, you can't possibly put together a couple of paragraphs that would be, um, <laughs> um, you can comprehend. Right. Right. Also, when you start talking about answering the phone, um, I make the shift from customer service to service excellence because that's what you really want. Right. right. Uh, um, I have this statement that says that customer service is going to hell in a handbasket in our society. Uh, we've forgotten a great deal of what it means to just be human to another human being. <clears throat> Talk about um, how you are helping those overcome those particular obstacles because that's important in the workplace, right? You got to communicate with 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 every with everyone, and, and most importantly, the patient. You got to communicate with the patient, right? Doc and I have talked about this a great deal. Mm -hmm. Wrote a whole book about. Yeah, it. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Want to read patient? it? Here you go. <laughs> 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 so 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 you know, talk about how you, you because. You're talking about those who may not, like as you said, maybe college wasn't for them. Right. So maybe they didn't do the best in high school, but they're seeking a career. And how are you helping them overcome those obstacles? So first of all, there, there are several different um, factors around this. Cause that takes you back to when you're talking about the foundation, you're talking about home right. life, and you only know what you know. Right. So everyone is not a me or everyone's not a you right you know we're all different so and i and i hope not anybody takes this the wrong way but this is the vision that i see and this is what i use often when i speak but imagine growing up uh in a dump dump area like you know a dump site mm -hmm. and this is your home mm -hmm. this is where you're accustomed to living so it's normal for you mm -hmm. and then somebody comes from another area that's clean you know, they don't live at a dump site. They don't have to go and pick through mm -hmm. for trash and food and clothing and all of that and make do. And they come over and try and tell you that, well, this is toxic. You know, this is the area you're living in is, is unlivable, like it's toxic. Well, what do you think is going to happen? I'm the problem. Mm. <laughs> Even though I'm the messenger and I'm coming, I'm bringing truth to you but you only know what you know. Mm -hmm. So I take that same mindset, like, you know, not to try and condemn people, like literally bring love and kindness, but I'm looking at where you are and I'm just meeting you where you mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. And that's the best thing that we can do. You meet them where they, where you are. So in order for you to meet people where they are, you have to do an assessment first. That's mm -hmm. the first thing mm -hmm. we learn in the medical profession. You assess first. Mm -hmm. um, you don't come in first judging, you know, mm -hmm. I need to know where your mindset is. Mm -hmm you know, before I can know how to help you. And so um, when I say it's a holistic approach, which I know all programs and all schools and instructors, they don't have time to deal with things like that because you're just coming just to teach. But there's barriers. There are barriers to your teaching. So if they cannot receive 
what you're teaching is because there's something else. So what Sankofa does is we're removing barriers. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, I understand them because I can meet you where they are. I've been to a place where I've been almost impoverished, you know, where um, maybe feeling like, oh, I don't know, you know, if my lights are gonna be on or not. You know, if if you've been there and you can relate to them, you can meet them Mm -hmm. there, you know, or you having problems with your kids or, you know, or maybe you have self-esteem issues, you know, low self-worth. A lot of times with the communication problem, it's the self-worth stuff, Mm -hmm. confidence. You know, these are things that aren't taught in the school system because we still got adults that are struggling with the same things that the teens are struggling with. So who's teaching who? You know, um, it's nothing now to see teachers and students fighting, I would have never, <laughs> ever thought. <laughs> no. That was never going to play no, out no, well. No, no, <laughs> no, uh, no it never, sure would never. Not. I'm a yeah. 70s baby, so I'm like, what is this madness that I'm seeing? It's like on TikTok or Twitter. It's like this is a regular conversation now, that, and all because your phone was confiscated. You know, why is your phone on anyways in the classroom? Like <laughs> when cell phones came out, I was like, what? Yeah, no. So it's just the the lack of respect, but you can't respect others if you don't respect yourself, you know? And what we do is we dress it up, we get glammed up, get your hair done, nails, makeup, have the best looking clothes or shoes and you look fly and then that, and then give you a nice phone and computer. So those things will now become the babysitters and that takes place of love and attention and affection so now we look at things like that instead of really looking at the heart and the mind and feeding it so with me having that background and knowing that you know making sure that the instructors that i work with or who come and work for me will actually know the same thing so you can understand my heart Mm -hmm. and what i want poured into Mm -hmm. and what's needed and Mm -hmm. that's that holistic approach so therefore we're able to help that whole person mm-hmm. who's coming in yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. because mm-hmm. other than that you can't reach them you can't touch them yeah it's so like trying to fix the inside problem with outside work that's right. Another that's topic right. we that's talk right. about that's all right. the time that's and right. there are a couple of concepts that i think really connect here i'd love to talk about them a little bit more because we talked about the customer service piece uh, and how it was kind of deficient we've talked about the the whole inside if you will right like right. there's a, there's something absent inside mm-hmm. that needs to be oh, filled yeah. And you end up with what seems like um, people are acting in this me-centered universe, but yeah, there's a big yeah. gap in the me because they don't know because they who haven't he is. done the work necessarily, yeah. and right. you and it leads up to this problem where you, you you really have no chance of meeting people where they are and exerting that kind of empathy because you're basically spending all your resources on yourself in a in a way that's not building yourself. It's just trying to fill this gap right so it's Mm -hmm. interesting i know that your coaching uh, emphasis that you have and and programs really are a lot about self-work which is what terry and i terry and i every podcast has elements of self-work because you know we are both big believers that all the real work is self-work absolutely so tell us a little bit about like if i was a student and enrolled in your school uh, how would that coaching component go for me if I you know, had some of the issues that you just described? What might my curriculum look like in terms of the coaching I could get? So it's not really a cookie cutter um, situation, but it is. So mm-hmm. for the state, we have certain things. We have to fulfill those basics. But at the same time, it's how you deliver. Mm-hmm. So your delivery is everything. Mm-hmm. And the things that you address, um, critical Thinking is a big thing for me because it's kind of like, mm-hmm. how do you, can you teach common sense? You can, <laughs> you, can. Mm-hmm. you know, it mm-hmm. might feel hopeless sometimes, but it's like, uh, it, you, you have your information in the book because mm-hmm. we have to have that foundation. But now how can you make this relatable? Like right now, mm-hmm. this is real life stuff with, with mm-hmm. the situation you would do. So I think that it's important to be able to critically think. So when you get out of here, you get hit with something. These questions, the test question is going to ask you to critically think as well. They're not just going to ask you word for word what was in the book because everybody's books are different. Um, So for me, being able to 
address the core stuff mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for um, that's required for the job. You need those fundamental skills. But then also, what are you going to do when you get, I'm saying, uh, a nurse who is disrespected by somebody else? And they come in and call you N-word. You know, how are you going to handle that? You know, you're going to want to fight, mm-hmm. break out and fight. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to go and get your gun, you know, because mm-hmm. this is where we are mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Or how do you handle that? There are things that you do, and they're just words, right? Or are they? So how do you heal? So we, we literally addressing things little mm-hmm. by little, but... Mm-hmm. Again, you don't know really what the problems are until they arise. So if in class, if somebody comes up and, you know, this is a question and I can tell, oh, this is an uh, issue of yours or it's deeper than, you know, what um, what is appearing. So there's some extra work that's needed. So it can be addressed right then or it can be addressed on the back end, like Mm -hmm. I don't mind pulling people off to the side and, you know, or calling, um, to address it. And we're still in the infant stage, you know, Mm -hmm. with the school, but Mm -hmm. I'm prepared to address that in a small group coaching Mm -hmm. sessions or Mm -hmm. even one-on-one. But Mm -hmm. for the most part, that's how it happens. We just literally address it as it comes up. Mm because it's relatable and uh, as a matter of fact our latest student who graduated she remembered a <laughs> I don't use that <laughs> I'm sorry I have a um, certain saying now I'm laughing so you're gonna want to have to know <laughs> what it is mm-hmm. but anyways it's funny because when she went to take her state board and she said I remember what you said about pookies you know and I'm like oh gosh you know you didn't go and say anything about it. but I just gave her a, a relatable story about you know, certain group of people who I call anybody can be a, mm-hmm. a pookie. Like mm-hmm. pookies are people who just kind of come and snatch and grab. They're crumb snatchers, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. they're coming to take, take, take. Mm-hmm. They're not going to contribute much, you know, to it. They're going to stunt your growth, you know. Um, it's just little things like that. And I said, you can uh, deal with them now. You can deal with them later, I said. But um, the, the biggest thing is, how you actually feel on the inside. You don't want to actually let Pookie take over your life. Mm -hmm. And Pookie don't control you. You know, you don't even control Pookie. Pookie's problem is not your problem. Pookie has a God problem. (laughs) So, you know, Mm -hmm. so whether the jealousy, envy, Mm -hmm. or, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. uh, the attitudes or whatever, you don't become Pookie. So you make sure that you're constantly keeping quality and, um, and your purpose greater than your problems and you know you don't you separate yourself but not so much you can still give pookie love like show out Mm -hmm. um love to them and respect but pookie may not respect you ever you know pookie might be Mm -hmm. jealous of you uh for even going back and doing Mm. something that you know they they wanted to do Mm -hmm. they always wanted to go to school or maybe wanted to become a cna or want to be a nurse Mm -hmm. and they weren't able to do it they didn't know how to and then they see you doing it and so now they're hating on you and they're trying to take down everything that you're doing but you stay focused and you still show love because uh even though you're showing love and you're going focused they always come back around if they're that's my firm belief anybody who's called to you you know spiritually if they're called to you they don't always come to you like, oh, hey, I like you. And, you know, mm-hmm. I'm so proud of you. And I like everything you're doing. Please mentor me. No, it's it's rarely like that. Normally, mm-hmm. it's like, ah, you think she's all that. You know, mm-hmm. you think you da 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 You know, but then they keep following you. Mm-hmm. They, <laughs> they keep following you for a reason. Mm-hmm. Or like the trolls on the Internet. You know, those are pookies. You know, you're just coming on just to every single day. You don't mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. the person's page, but you keep showing up just to go and throw hate at them. It's something that you want from there what do you want to learn you know and so you can learn a lot from the pookies so that's mm-hmm. why i was telling her so she said i remember what you said about pookies <laughs> <laughs> you know because yeah. when you go and take the exam you're not just by yourself so there are other people who are mm-hmm. da, 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 a little chattering and all that so she she passed we got a hundred percent pass rate by the way all <laughs> so, right awesome. yeah that's so, awesome. so that's yeah awesome. it kind of reminds me you know one of the things i always try to try to teach especially my kids actually but lots of folks is the reason I treat people 
respectfully and try to do it all the time is because I deserve it. Mm -hmm. It yeah. doesn't have mm -hmm. anything to do with mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. You That's know, right. and I know Terry and I have talked right. about, That's you right. know, this kind of stuff. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it is, it's reflective of the person that I am. It doesn't have right. a thing in the world to do with them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I always I, say that when people have problems with me, well, that's a you and God problem because I'm doing God's yeah, work. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I don't right, know what to tell yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, Go yeah, talk yeah, to yeah, the boss. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I tell people all the time, that's your problem, man. I don't, I don't have that, that issue. You need to take that up with yourself. Uh -huh. But, um, you know, what I'm also hearing you say um, as you coach these young ladies and as she called you and said she remembered what you said about Pookie. Mm -hmm. We're talking about generational impact. Yeah. Because now she's going through that process of learning and remembering that if she has children or nieces and nephews, that's mm -hmm. a message that she can pass along to say really what that message is, be confident in yourself, know right. exactly what you're capable of doing and don't let anybody take you off of your path. Absolutely. I stand by that. Mm -hmm. And because I had Homie the Clown, that was my, <laughs> my, if you read the book, yeah. <laughs> the uh -huh. Diaries yeah. of a Resilient uh -huh. Black Nurse, you should mm -hmm. go and get it. Yeah, you should. Absolutely. <laughs> but Homie the Clown changed my life. You know, mm -hmm. he lives in North Carolina, by the way. I'm like, wow, what a coincidence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're getting closer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, Homie the Clown, that's the name that I gave him in the book, but he literally was that person mm -hmm. for me. Um, if toxic situation a toxic relationship you know um toxic lifestyle mm -hmm. you know that and i only had him for science so i didn't have him all day mm -hmm. you know but it's just like you're getting hit mike tyson you go and get mm -hmm. in the ring and you get punched mm -hmm. in the face and mm -hmm. okay every day i'm getting ready to go back in the ring just to get punched in the face again mm -hmm. you know well even after that punch stops you're going to still have something that's lingering, you know, for years mm -hmm. because of the punch that you've been taking. And, um, you know, once you recover from that, you don't want to feel that punch anymore. Mm -hmm. And you don't want anybody else to feel that punch either. So, you know, that's where purpose is born. Like those, the, 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 I like to say the worst things that have happened to me are like most pain, painful areas of my life, mm -hmm. I've always come out and created something. Mm -hmm. So whether mm -hmm. it was a business mm -hmm. or product, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. service, something, mm -hmm. they've all come from a source of pain or just something that I'm really just drawn to mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. or feeling really excited about. Yep, Because it's it? always impactful. What is it? Um, I think the quote goes something like, uh, uh, the mother of necessity. Invention is the mother of necessity, something like that. Necessity is the necessity mother, of, mother invention. of invention. Yeah, yeah I no. got that backwards, huh? <laughs> um, but yeah, that's exactly what, what, I, what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. um, you say, and it's interesting uh, as I listen to you and, you know, the utilization of the word toxic, right? Because oh, yeah. we didn't use that, at least when we grew up, you know. And uh, I, I'm, I'm still having some challenges, um, you know, just accepting that a human being can be toxic. Um, I, I just I have challenges <laughs> yeah. with that. I understand people have their problems, yeah. and we just assign the word toxic to their problems, right? So I definitely understand that. Um, but given that Wilmington is what it is, and uh, there's a great need of what you're doing in 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 the community as far as training and development in that space um, what are some of the challenges you're facing from a resource perspective Lord have mercy <laughs> <laughs> I think after about the fourth thing you said I'm like I know where this is going <laughs> ah that's a loaded question it's it's not been easy um, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty resourceful mm -hmm. um, but no, it's it's definitely, I guess, and I think I even said this recently, I thought going through fibroids years ago, um, I had massive <laughs> fibroids, um, in an eight and a half hour surgery, <laughs> mm. I survived. And, mm. you know, um, that I wasn't sure if I would make it. Well, I did. I knew then I would make it, you know, out, but going through those fibroids, that was life changing for me. And I thought that was like the hardest thing. I've done. And prior to the fibroids, I thought passing the NCLEX, 
mm-hmm. you know, was mm-hmm. the hardest thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. NCLEX is mm-hmm. a standard exam for mm-hmm. all nurses. Um, but this school, Lord, <laughs> mm-hmm. this school has uh, been the absolute hardest thing I have ever done um, in life, really. But still the most rewarding. Mm. It's kind of like you ever mm. been addicted to something? Mm. You know, it's like mm. this is a true mm. addiction. I'm like, okay, you know, I'm literally in, and this is what I, I'm, I use Tyson. I do like Tyson, but mm-hmm. Tyson and Holyfield on each side, mm-hmm. literally, and I'm in the ring, and Ali is across here, and he's waiting on me mm. <laughs> as well. Mm. So it's like mm. I keep getting knocked, but I keep getting up, mm-hmm. you know, so I'm not on the ground, I'm not on the floor, and that's a good thing. But um, it's so many challenges. There are so many barriers, um, so many things that aren't fair. Um, But it's just what it is. Um, I have a saying, and we have a saying now, at St. Kofa, St. Kofa don't raise no punks. Mm -hmm. God don't raise Mm -hmm. any punks. Uh, He gave me the vision, Mm -hmm. and I stand strong on it. Mm -hmm. So I know what he showed me, and um, I was not always strong on that. And so... um, but after going through a few, few challenges, um, even now, you know, I'm like, uh, uh-uh, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I ain't no punk, mm-hmm, you know. And mm-hmm. so um, it has been life changing. Definitely. Um, I've seen it on both sides. I've seen the people um, who come just to be nosy and see, you know, mm-hmm. what's mm-hmm. going on and, mm-hmm. um, you know, to see how did I get here and, you mm-hmm. know, how did you get this going? And, mm-hmm, oh, you mm-hmm. need to <laughs> help me do this. I've been trying to do this for a long time. And I'm like, <laughs> can I get up off the floor first, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know, dang, you know? And so I've, I've had that, you know, situation. Then you had the people who are, like, envious, like, uh, you know, don't mm-hmm. really want to mm-hmm. help. And then I've had those people who are really, really excited, really proud, trying to help want to help they want to they don't know how to help Mm -hmm. you know or how they can be a part Mm -hmm. of it um everybody don't have the funds but people have the heart Mm -hmm. and that's a big thing so it's like okay how can we help and be on board you know with this situation but it has been like crisis almost you know Mm -hmm. just continuously going so um it's not easy to get started you know did have to go through three state Mm -hmm. board approvals Mm -hmm. um and i'm proud of that but i couldn't do that by myself i literally hired a team Mm -hmm. um to help me with that they've been amazing um but i thought getting the school started and approved was the hardest thing it's the keeping it running i'm like Mm -hmm. oh is it gonna get harder are Mm -hmm. you serious (laughs) Mm -hmm. so um i do uh, i am not a quitter at all anybody who knows me like really mm-hmm, knows mm-hmm. it's like no you don't quit how you keep going well i just want you to know i quit probably about every week mm-hmm. there was this one week and i said i didn't quit this week at all and i quit <laughs> and it's probably for like an hour and some change and i'm like okay i'm tired of quitting because i'm like why did i quit <laughs> okay no <nope. laughs> so that's why i said i'm in the ring i get knocked down and i get right back up but these are um pioneering stuff and everybody don't understand that and this pioneering stuff keeps coming back to me. I had a, um, I used to work for the VA, I'll just say that. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a nurse who was the CEO uh, at that time. And she would always come. Uh, she was just, shout out to Miss Goolsby if she's listening to this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, she was literally um, always encouraging me. She would always come down. She loved that I was innovative. And, um, she would say, you know, you're a pioneer, you know, you're pioneering and this is how it is. And she would say that because I was, we were, I was a part of this group where we did health coaching. So Mm. we became integrative health coaches Mm -hmm. through Duke. Mm -hmm. Um, And we were the first ones basically to do it in the VA system, Mm -hmm. the entire um, country. So that was a big thing. And then our goal was, um, we were tasked to now go out and train. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. the training part oh, was life changing you know, it changed our lives but now we were to go out and train everybody and mm-hmm. then also do the patients that was the hard part because mm-hmm. the mindset um, the kickback mm-hmm. the barriers mm-hmm. you know <laughs> the barriers the mm-hmm. barriers and I probably need to be a barrier expert <laughs> at mm-hmm. this yeah. point because um, really um, it, 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 
for every obstacle, which I I heard, um, I can't remember the girl's name now. She's a young girl. She always looks like Angela Bassett's daughter. You know, <laughs> Tana Kiki, okay. yeah, yeah, Kiki yeah. something, I think. Yeah. But um, anyway, she said, what's an obstacle? Because they said, how do you keep going, uh, getting through all these obstacles? She immediately replied and said, what's an obstacle? Right. And I thought about it. And I said, that's right. What is an obstacle? You know, because we go through these things like a speed bump in the road. You know, so every little speed bump, if you make a complete stop, we're going to be looking at you like you're crazy. <laughs> like, yeah, why are you right. stopping? It's a speed bump. That's it's right. not, you know, really an obstacle. It's something you can actually get over. And if we have that mindset, it's just a speed bump. Okay, there are always options. And for me, I had to change my mentality um, and and start focusing on other pioneers, you know, <laughs> it's like, okay, what did this person do? You know, how there, and all that, all it is, because everything that I seem to be doing, it's like always, it's either not being done the way I'm doing it. You know, I'm looking for somebody else to have already done this and there's not a template for it. Note to anybody else listening to this, if that happens, just go to the source. Who gave you the vision? <laughs> Write it down, <laughs> make it plain, yeah. mm -hmm. and you meditate on that. Ask God for instructions. And I, uh, he always leads um, me in the right direction. He comes through every time, even when it looks the craziest <laughs> of crazy. And so I'm in a crazy season. I've been in a crazy season, I think, during the pandemic. You know, I don't think I've... <laughs> I don't think we've kind yeah, of gotten out of it. Out of. Right. Yeah, and right. I I can speak for the nurses. Like, I know we're tired. Teachers, too, right? they're tired. I was teaching during the pandemic, and that's what prompted me to come out and do this. You know, I just... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, you know, you hit on a topic right there that I think is really important, and we should, we should explore a little bit here as we, as we near the end. We'll use nursing as an example. We can mm -hmm. just as well use education or mm -hmm. many other things. You know, current state is pretty rough. Mm -hmm. I read an article in Becker's last week that 85% of the acute care nurses plan to leave within a year. Yeah. 85%, right? Yeah. So, so, you know, current state is poor. Mm -hmm. You were talking about how, you know, you, you you touched on a topic that says, you know, you're going out and looking for, you know, best practices or don't reinvent the wheel, but you find out there's no wheel. Right. And I think that's pretty important about where we find ourselves right now is that when the way that things have been done has created a disaster, what we need is different thinking, right? Like what we need is that, you know, Maybe it's, you know, on the extreme of innovation toward invention, but it's something remarkably different, which is what you're providing. So that's, that's another topic Terry and I talk about a lot of times is, you right. know, this is, you know, a, a co-creation process, something different, that's a transformation. Right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. We can't that's right. keep doing the same thing. That is insanity. And there is a wheel. But we just don't really know it because that's not what we've been mm -hmm. using. It's integrative, right? Mm -hmm. So that wellness wheel, there is a wheel. And so we don't have to reinvent that. It's called holistic. It's a holistic approach. And that's what we're not doing in the facility. So it's the culture. And if we can get through to the executives, so all of our leaders, because that's where it has to come top, top down. Mm -hmm. So they're the ones. And you can always tell... So I just did an article in um, Wilma uh, recently about that. But you can tell the environment, how healthy that environment is based off of what you get when you walk through the door um, for overall or your whole experience, you know, going through um, that, that customer relations journey. Um, if you come in, like just from the phone call, I'm like, okay, you can't even answer the phone, you know, or <laughs> let alone construct the emails or whatever this environment has got to be talks that's like you're walking in a building it looks brand new but you see roaches you know so what did you actually do there's roaches over here it's for a reason you know so that's a sign that's a telltale sign that something's not good because these roaches are comfortable being in here I'm not comparing the people to roaches so to speak but you get what I'm saying? It's an environmental um, so place. It's an yeah. environmental thing. And so if we look at that wellness wheel, it addresses your spirituality. It addresses like those, the self-care stuff. Um, 
the, just that holistic approach, not just your physical well-being, but your emotional well-being, your, fit, your mental well-being, um, those things are important. Like, where do you like spending your time? What do you do most? Like, we're not getting to know the people or knowing who we're bringing in. Mm -hmm. We're just looking for a warm body now. Um, what about those executives who are burnt out? What do you have in place for them? You know, how are you nurturing those execs? Because if you nurture them and provide them with everything that they need, they're going to naturally do that with everybody around them. And then those people are, who they're naturally nurturing is going to naturally nurture their flock. And then it continues to go down. So it has to start from the top. You know, I, I think about um, <clears throat> this pamphlet I read a couple of years ago, um, Hacking Uncertainty. How do you navigate uncertainty and ambiguity, right? And you don't navigate it with intuitiveness. You navigate it being counterintuitive. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you know, we've, as a society, we've been taught to conform. But in those times of uncertainty and ambiguity, it's about being nonconformist because you need different thought. Right? And you need different actions and you need different results. You know, it was surprising at during the pandemic or after the pandemic, not after, but toward the end of it when, you know, you got you look at these companies and the CEOs are saying, you know, we want you guys to come back into the office now because that's the only thing they know is to have employees in the office when it's been proven that work can still continue from a virtual perspective or a hybrid perspective, right? But the mental model around mm. the employee, leader, manager scenario is you have to be in the office so that I can put my eyes on you. I can see you. And I want to make sure that you are productive. When, in fact, it's been proven that that virtual work or the hybrid work can happen. And so different type of thinking, counterintuitive thinking, versus the intuitive thinking right and so that's what i'm hearing um from you and then it's easy to start a business it's very difficult to sustain one and that's what i preach all the time because mm -hmm. i can run down to i can run to raleigh and fill out the paperwork and i have a business yeah. Yeah, however the llc is nothing <laughs> yes so but to sustain to grow and, su and to sustain Right. Those are the challenges that are, 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 are faced uh, on a day to day basis from not only recruiting uh, employees, but to recruit the students that you want to to teach. And it's a it's a it's a, a moment by moment kind of thought process of what you know, what's next? What do I do next? How do I do this next? You know, it, and you're right. It is pioneering. When, yeah. you, when you start thinking about entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you hit on a topic right there. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's a whole chapter on it in my book, mm -hmm. Trust, right? Mm -hmm. So when mm -hmm. you start talking about that mentality of let's go back to what I know, let's bring everybody in the <laughs> yeah, office, yeah, yeah. what you've demonstrated right out of the gate is – an absence of trust That's in right. the system, right? And you, you know, and you're trying to you're trying to uh, replace it with control, which is right. a fallacy. There's because mm -hmm. uh, that's all they know. Control doesn't happen. That's yeah. right. You know, you might think you can have the illusion of control, but you really can't control. That's certainly right. not another that's human. Right. So that that absence of trust is 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 one of those foundational things that if you got that then your foundation is going right. to be unstable right out that's of the right. gate that's yeah. right that's right that's right yeah so uh quality safety and trust that's those are the words that i okay. put awesome. at st kofa because i want people to i want it to be synonymous with the name like awesome. is it quality is it safe do you trust me like people who tr who know of me they they do trust me right. you know they know that it's going to be quality uh whatever quality product that i put out so um, even with my self-care boxes, <laughs> escape boxes, I have a nurse, nursing box. It's Nurses Week, by the way. So shout awesome, out to all awesome, my nurses. Awesome. Yeah. Happy Nurses Week. Um, but yeah, it, that's where it has to start at the top. You know what i like for you to do right now? Mm -hmm. i like for you to pick up your book so that the audience can take a look. They can see it. 
they saw it leaning back a little so bit. Lean back. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and it is it's called the, the, diaries the Diaries of a Resilient, resilient. Black Nurse. Yes, absolutely. So there's somebody on the back. He's yes, I see Doc on the back. <laughs> <laughs> see Doc on the back. Awesome. Not a nurse. Don't even play one on. <laughs> <laughs> that doctor nurse. That doctor nurse uh, relationship is important, mm -hmm. and it's a team approach. So I mean, one needs the other. So mm -hmm. nurses, we can do a lot. We do a lot, but we still act under doctor's orders, and doctors, they can't do it alone at right. all. Y'all definitely right. need us. So. Yeah, well, that team, we need to get you up in Raleigh right now where they're talking about all these political pieces of, of independent practice and different kind of things, and I love the way you put it. It's really about team-based team, care. Taking and it's away beyond, team it's nursing not team even, care. Not even just doctors and nurses. There's a whole lot of players on that team right. all playing really important roles. That's and, right. It's just so important to acknowledge, you know, it's complex. And we've talked mm -hmm. about it a lot of times. Medical knowledge doubles about every 70 to 75 days. Mm -hmm. So That's nobody right. can master it. It's got to be about the team. It's got to right. be it about is. working yeah. together. That's right. And when you can create that team that starts from a foundation of empathy, which is really, I think empathy is a, is a great word that describes what it takes to meet somebody where they are. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't mean you got to go there. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's but right. you do That's have right. to understand where they are. That's right. As another founder, got a chapter about that. I'm That's right. <laughs> want to read We're it? hitting all my chapters. <laughs> That's, yeah. right. Uh, That's, know, right. But, That's right. But that's, that's right. the truth. That's and, right. you know, you right. described it so beautifully, mm -hmm. you know, as, a, as an important part of your school. So what we're seeing is that these themes keep coming up. They are the fundamentals. They're the fundamentals mm -hmm. of humanity. That's right. That's right. They're going to they're, they're going to have to get down to the basics of healthcare. The basics of healthcare is self-care. It's quality care. We have to get back to the basics of the business of healthcare. If we do not take care of ourselves, we can't take care of our patients. If we do not take care of our facilities, then you cannot take care of your employees. The nurses are going to leave. We have so many options. And I, I, I don't know how to overemphasize this, but the mm -hmm. pandemic mm -hmm. was real and mm -hmm. it was a real eye opener. So when I tell you, cause I'm connected with those, you know, national, we're talking national and international organizations or groups where nurse entrepreneurs are on the rise. They have been. So literally they're creating their own economy or they're going out and being independent contractors, you know, going mm -hmm. in and working on their own or, going and helping just one patient but you still need acute care nurses you still need acute care nurses mm -hmm. you still need even in the nursing facilities the nursing facilities long-term care uh, I just met with somebody early this morning it's literally it's it they're leaving so mm -hmm. you know just to keep hearing this and that's a CNA so it, it's not uncommon but what what they are realizing is their value that's a core, it's a core value. So I feel like, Hey, I'm worth more than this. And y'all are showing me that I don't mean much to you. So I am going to leave. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go this place because I feel like I'm valued more. Now, granted, they'll say, Oh yeah, because the money, I was a travel nurse for it by almost a decade. The money will get, you'll get over it after a while. So you make good money. That's fine. But you're still in a toxic environment. So you still, feeling the same way you can detach mentally because that's the way that we did you know so you go in there and you you do the job and you get out mm -hmm. that's the that's just the mentality of a travel nurse so i'm going in i'm not being attached to all your drama here mm -hmm. i'm just here mm -hmm. giving my assignment you know hey how you doing if i make a friend here then that's cool mm -hmm. but i'm in business mm -hmm. i'm gonna come here get my assignment get my money and i'm out and I'm telling you, that's what it is. So if they don't get it here, they're going to go and travel. They're going to go and start another business or they will go and find something else to do. Mm -hmm. You know, so it really starts with really loving up on them while they're here, um, treating people with love and respect, um, putting nurses at the table. Oh, my God. We have so many people. And I mean, this has been my experience as well, which I'm finding uh, most of the people who are making the biggest decisions about nursing here in this area, they're not nurses. Mm -hmm. It's the most irritating thing to me. One day I really like, I found myself 
fussing about it. I cussed and I cried. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, I got pissed off. So when it happens, when Sabrina gets pissed off, <laughs> mm -hmm. oh boy, something's about to happen because I can't stand that. Why do we have so many non-nurses at the table making decisions about nursing? You want to know why we got the nursing shortage? That's why. Put some nurses there. And a representative from each. You need nursing assistants. You need LPN, RN, nurse practitioner, not career board nurses or people who are usually on like representing nursing for years. And from executive level, we need you too. But you have to have like maybe even creating a nurse advisory board. But you got to hear from the nurses because you can't excess out. You start removing nurses, it's a problem. Yeah, you got another example of a, something else we talk about all the time on this podcast is inclusive environment. That's right. Right. You know, because it's that co creation process right. requires that inclusive environment and, and acknowledges that we're all interdependent in, in very right. strong ways. And so, you know, I love the fact that you, you hit on the money component being inadequate. That's oh, one thing that I've yeah. always known about every career. And, and we've talked about it, I know. In, very specific discussions that I've had over the years when when the focus would go to well we've got to you know we've got to get our salaries within the top three and then that'll that'll shut everybody up and mm -hmm. I was, I'm always like no that's never going to be enough it has got to be a whole package that values the person for right. for their mm -hmm. their humanity that's their right. skill sets what they do that's right. as a, you know it's like no machine works if you just pluck out one gear. You, know, it, you got to have yeah. all the gears for the machine to work properly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have a partner who has a workshop uh, that she's doing speaking engagements and mm -hmm. workshops. And one is called We Love Pizza. Nurses, we just love pizza. <laughs> and it's like her way of saying, we're tired of pizza. Like, we don't want a right, pizza party. Right, right. Stop it already. <laughs> you know? Right, yeah. Right, 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 <laughs> but literally, right. and and you get it. Like, oh, he got a pizza party, you know. It's like, okay, well, <laughs> we're already unhealthy. Or we're just, you know, mm -hmm. coming in here. Are you going to keep giving mm -hmm. us donuts and cakes and, you know, all that? But it's quick food and things that you got to have. But there's something else that can be done. There mm -hmm. are other things that can be done. That's why, like, I've I've sold those boxes, like, in bulk before for, you know, Employee Appreciation mm -hmm. Week or mm -hmm. Teacher. I have teacher boxes, too. But it it's nice to see, like, those um, principals or people who will come up and say, hey, I want to order this for my department, you know, and they order it and it's, hey, can you turn this around? Can you get this? And it's just self-care products, but it's just something that makes them feel you know, appreciate it, but not just a one-time mm -hmm, thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I noticed, like, this particular school, they are always looking for some. They're always coming and ordering, you know, or um, even this nursing department, you know, saying, hey, what else you got now? I want to do something for Nurses Week. You know, so when I get hit up like that, I really appreciate that. I had a nurse escape night or a CNA escape night is what I did. Um, so it's basically kind of like a ladies' night out, but it's open for all nursing assistants. Um, and that was just to show them some appreciation. Like what, what are mm -hmm. y'all really doing for nursing, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. nursing mm -hmm. assistants and how do you show them you're appreciating them, you know, and, uh, we got to do better with that. Uh, that absolutely. Yeah. We got to do yeah. better. And yeah. I love the way that, uh, You've sort of, as we're finishing up, landed on appreciation because we certainly appreciate you. We appreciate our <laughs> listeners being out there and hanging right. with us. We could talk about this stuff for hours and hours right. and, you That's know, right. solve a lot of the world's problems. But we're wrapping up. If you want to catch us, then you can find us at unlikelyintersection.com. You can find us here on Facebook, Unlikely Intersections. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, Unlikely Intersections. Me, Doc Philip Brown, on LinkedIn or at my website, docphilipbrown.com. And Terry? You can find me at Terry Jackson, PhD, on LinkedIn. Find me on Facebook. And we would encourage you to go to our YouTube page as well as our website. When you go to YouTube, please like and comment and share. And if you have any topics you'd like for us to, to discuss, please feel free to share. And, Sabrina, if, we, if someone wants to be a CNA, or they just want to contact you, how would they do so? So you can contact me for CNA purposes. You want CNA, CPR, coaching, certifications. Um, you can go to Sankofa Training Institute.com. That's S A N K O F A. Sankofa, like the Sankofa bird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Um, and then you can also follow me on LinkedIn, Saprina Hickman, or Facebook, Saprina Hickman. On Instagram, I am Escape Coach um, there. Um, for my website, I guess, SaprinaHickman.com, you can go there as well uh, for just anything else, Saprina Coaching, Escape Boxes. Awesome. Anybody right. can't find you and really trying hard. Right? <laughs> you can Google me literally. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks yeah. for a great conversation. Thank and you for our, having me. Absolutely. And to our listeners, we'll see you at the next intersection.